Today we'll be taking our first look at the legendary tier IJN cruiser Yoshino. I'll show you my build here for the mod selection and my commander choice. I'm running Azerlane Azuma. If you don't have her, I think Yamamoto would work just fine on this ship. But how do you get this ship? Let's start off by talking about that. You get the Yoshino by spending 35,000 Winter Shards in the store. Winter Shards are a temporary currency for this, up, for this Christmas update. You can get them by achieving a victory in your Tier 6 and above ships. Small amount for each victory. I think there's some of it up for grabs in the campaign. It'll be a reward for the upcoming arena season. And you get it by buying the Santa Crate bundles, which also contain these winter shards. 35,000 is a steep number, though. According to the patch notes, it's mathematically possible to get all 35,000 winter shards you need for this ship for free, but most likely you're going to have to be buying some Santa crates to get enough shards. My advice to you is if you are in any way interested in this ship, grind out as many of those winter shards as you possibly can to make the price as reduced as you possibly can in the event that you have to buy crates to get the rest of the shards, because this ship is honestly fantastic. It's absolutely phenomenal. I think it is probably my favorite of the new ships that they released in this update, even over the Marco Polo and the Marlboro, the two campaign rewards. Yoshino is basically what you would get if you took the Azuma and gave it some upgrades. Like the Azuma, Yoshino has nine 310 millimeter guns. In fact, I think these are exactly the same guns you find on the Azuma. They've got the same HE Alpha Strike of 5100, same fire chance of 30%, and same AP Alpha Strike of 9600. So basically, Azuma gunpower. The only real difference is I can get the reload on these guns down to 14.4 seconds, which is incredibly fast for their size. I've done that by using the legendary skill on Azerlane Azuma that decreases the reload, and of course with the reload module. So, same firepower as the Azuma in terms of guns, but faster reload, thus more DPM. But more than that, Yoshino has torpedoes. You can see them sailing across in the distance, and the torpedoes sort of remind me of the Otago's torpedoes in the way that the firing angles are set up. The Yoshino has two quad launchers on either side of the ship. One quad launcher can fire pretty far forward. One quad launcher can fire pretty far backward. It's sort of like the Otago. These torpedoes have a 12-kilometer range, though. They've got a 23,000 alpha strike, 67 knot speed. They take a long time to reload, but you get eight of them off either side of the ship, and they have a 12 km range whereas you have an 11.2-kilometer detectability by sea. So technically, the Yoshino is an oversized destroyer whose torpedoes you can launch from stealth. I mean, not really. The torpedoes are not the bread and butter of this ship, but they certainly are an option for dealing tremendous amount of damage. Uh, beyond the torpedoes, the Yoshino's maneuverability statistics are not great. It's got a very fast top speed, actually, of 34.6 knots, which is honestly pretty quick for a cruiser of this size. But it does have a 920-meter turning circle, which is bigger than a lot of battleships, and it's got an 11.1-second rudder shift time. So you couldn't accuse it of being agile. But the hit points pool, 61,800, quite robust, and the armor on the Yoshino. Well, it's got 30 millimeters of armor plating on its sides, 25 millimeter bow and stern, so of course it can be overmatched, but the side armor, being 30 millimeters, can be angled against 16 inch guns and smaller. Obviously the likes of Yamato, Republique, Musashi, they will overmatch the 30 millimeter side plating, so angling against them is not really possible. Your Citadel belt armor may deflect some shells, but they'll overmatch the upper belt armor. But everything else, the Yoshino is very well protected against, and it can angle quite effectively, which makes it a tough nut to crack for any battleships that you're fighting, especially since it has a long range on its guns. They can go out to 17.4 kilometers on my build, 
So you simply play it at longer to medium ranges, sniping HE at angled targets, and switching to the AP when you get the broadsides of either cruisers or battleships. Either way, pretty effective. This first shot here against the main I don't think really shows that off, but we're about to get a good salvo here once our guns reload against the broadside Yamato. Let's see here how this one does. Basically, it's a Zuma levels of performance, so if you're familiar with that, you basically know the drill here. What was that, 14k off that Yamato? Yeah. The HE and AP on the ship is fantastic. Now we spot the AFK Gearing, who has been spotting us this entire time. You can see that we're not really playing with a full deck of cards here. This is a 7v7 match because some tactical genius probably turned off crossplay. Could be the Gearing, maybe. He's AFK, so we're not really going to worry about him right now. One shot into his broadside with the AP. We've got a main closing in on us, and we've got two cruisers threatening to come around the corner there. So we're going to take these torpedoes for the Yoshino. We want to be careful, though, because the main can hurt us if we give him too much broadside, but we can angle against him, so we're waiting for his shot. You can see there we're able to bounce most of it. We take more damage from whatever else shot us over that island over there, and we get one set of torpedoes out, trying to turn away. The turning circle coming to bite us here a little bit. This ship is kind of a clunker. It's not agile. So we run into the island. We're going to have to reverse now, which is sort of dangerous. I don't really want to reverse right in front of a main, but I have little choice at this point. Hopefully my torpedoes will do something to him. And then we get spotted as we round the corner there. Not sure what by, but a cruiser. Remember those two cruisers? At least one of them is also pushing forward. It's the Minotaur. I don't know what he was thinking. I still have one set of torpedoes left as my first set does make contact with the main there, doing a lot of damage to him. And the second set, Dev strikes the Minotaur with no problem. GG, my friend. I'm not sure what that was about, but uh, better luck next time. Meanwhile, AFK gearing, showing us just how effective these high explosive shells can be. How devastating they can be if you get them all into a destroyer. And, uh, well, the thing does have secondaries, so close quarters experts are also possible. That leaves only the Kronstadt left. I don't think my team has really moved from their spawns at the beginning of this game. They've sort of been just sitting down there to the south, providing the anvil to, I guess, my hammer, so to speak. One last demonstration of the Azumas and or not the Azuma, the Yoshino's incredible AP against the Kronstadt. He's not going to be floating for too much longer. So, yeah, the reason I showed you this game is because I think it demonstrates the efficacy of the Yoshino's AP, HE, and torpedoes. This is a fantastic legendary tier cruiser. It's sort of a super cruiser in line with the likes of Alaska, Stalingrad, of course, Azuma. And out of all the super cruisers we have in the game, as of right now, this one might be my favorite to play. It is actually fantastic. So my advice to you, if you want to get it, because obviously it's going to be a grind, don't spend those winter shards on anything else in the store. Not the Genova, not the Commander guises, nothing. Save all of them that you possibly can so that you can hopefully pick this ship up for cheap because it's a fantastic legendary tier cruiser. It's very effective. I like it a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.